Now let's do post-processing of the simplified PCB model that we did earlier. So like I said, I have already saved and uh, done the solution and saved the results. And the results that you need if you want to load a previously solved model in ANSYS APDL are a DB file and an RST file with a given name. So if I go back to my uh, working directory, I see that I have a file which is called DB and a file called RST, the same file names but different uh, extensions. And I need both of them to load in ANSYS APDL and do post-processing of a simulation that I've done earlier. I've written a script for post-processing. I'll go through every line and um, explain what each line does. The first line is uh, to, to determine if this is a batch mode. So the post-process script, uh, post script that I've written is good for batch mode uh, running. But right now I'm in the uh, window mode, so I'm going to skip this line. Also, these lines change the background of uh, the window. That would be useful if uh, we were doing the batch mode and we wanted to save plots with white background for printing. And if we were in the batch mode, that's when we would not see the window. In order to make sure that the plots are saved as a file, I could use this backslash show, comma PNG, or PNG to make sure that all the graphics are output as a PNG file with the given file name. And then here, using the resume command, I resume the database file, which the name is given in here. So I, I, I should have this database file or DB file in the working directory where I'm working in, and that would load those results. So if I just copy these two lines, finish and clear, and just show you what that means, So it finished everything, everything is clear, and I skip these lines because I'm already in the window, and if I just copy the resume command, and paste it in here, and wait a little bit, I see that ANSYS loaded the results for me from the database. If I can take a look at it in 3D, and these lines, th these arrows and colors are basically the loads, boundary conditions, reaction forces that are uh, calculate for this model. Next, I start post-processing and using the file command, I load the RST file. So if I do that, I don't see anything changed, but the results are read. And now I say set last to read the last set of results or la last load step and sub step and my analysis. So if I just copy this, it's probably going to take a little while. So ANSYS read the results. And what I can do here, again, this is good for batch mode if you want to change the angle of view. But I, I skip that because I'm window. Now I can do PLN sol, plot node all solution. And what I want to type or, or plot is temperature. So if I do that and plot in here, this is the temperature variation and throughout this model because uh, due to the uh, heat flux at the bottom surface and convection at the top surface of this model. So in the, top, in the bottom is about 44 degrees Celsius and on the top is about 42 degrees Celsius. Now let's say I want to see the temperatures and uh, von Mises stresses just for the solder balls. So if I take a look at only for these. What I can do is to first select the elements. So E cell to ele select elements by material. And I don't remember what material number I gave to solder, uh, solder ball material properties. And that doesn't matter because I had assigned an, a number to SLD mat, which is the parameter I used to define the material models for the solder ball, which if I come to parameters here, I can see that SLD mat is 3, so it's transferred uh, to the database files after I saved everything, so I can just use that and plot in here. So if I do eplot, but I also want to select the nodes associated to these elements. So I do NSLE, which means select nodes associated to selected elements. S means select, 
and one means all the nodes so you can just copy that part and do n plot for now do this see that only the nodes attached to the solid balls are selected let's do e plot it looks better and now I can do PLN sol for temperatures so see the temperatures along the um, the solders which are basically very uh, consistent because uh, of the geometry or, or the uh, the physics of the analysis uh, it was a very simple one 42 degrees to 42 degrees not much change in the temperature of the solder balls but I can also see the uh, nodal solutions for the fundamental stress so if I do that paste it in here so this shows the von Mises stresses at the nodes as we expect at the sides we have uh, concentrated stress which is where the solids are attached to different material we could also do PLE sol S E Q V this is the element solution um, and next thing I want to do is to all cell and change the coordinate system to active uh, to Cartesian because if you remember we defined a local coordinate system during modeling and I want to find a path uh, and this path has two points and 50 divisions along the path and I want to create uh, as I said two points for this path and let's see where this path is called path one so if I do this and define the path do e plot now and then come in here under path and plot the path so path one starts from here let me zoom out zoom out plot path again so as you can see it goes through one of the solder balls so at the center of this solder ball from the bottom of the PCB to the top of this PCB so um, here when I defined the uh, points 1 and 2 X is ball pitch divided by 2 for both of them and then Y goes from minus ball height minus PCB thickness to plus ball height plus substrate thickness plus mo uh, mold thickness so basically the thickness of the PCB the height of the solder balls the thickness of the substrate and the thickness of the um, the molding compound is the length of this path and the Z is uh, basically minus six times ratio that is uh, defined throughout that is uh, due to the solid model creation now I'm mapping temperature to this path so if I do this copy that and paste it in here you can see that the temperature is mapped to the um, the path I can plot that here this is the variation of temperature along the uh, the path I can also print that so I can say PR path and I can say ntemp I think it was the name that I ntmp is the name that I gave and these are the temperatures along that path that I can use next I want to create another path if I do e plot diagonal here but from one corner to the other corner and then assign other parameters to that path so I'm defining path to 40 divisions and here I'm actually selecting those node numbers so by using the node command and giving the X Y and Z coordinates of those points I can select those node numbers so if I copy these lines first and take a look at the parameters n1 and n2 are numbers referring to elements of those locations now I want to find a path path 2 by two points and the points are defined by nodes n1 and n2 and what I am 
assigning to those paths is the u in the y direction, displacement in the y direction, and temperature. So let's copy those and paste in here. Now let's plot. Let's first of all recall a path. I want to recall path two and plot on graph tuy first. This is the diagonal displacement of the uh, top surface of the substrate or the mold in y direction. Now I want to do temperature, which is basically constant. I mean, the variations is just a, a delusion. The values is 42, probably with some um, small variations. I can come to PR path and say, let me see what names I gave to that. T U Y at T T M P. So T, not there, actually here. T U Y and T T M P. These values are plus. Can you see they're 42 at the top surface? So the next thing I want to do is to save the values for all the nodes on the top surface of the. Uh, uh, basically the mold. So if I do E plot and if I do N cell S location by Y and these are the values the thickness or the height of the ball plus the thickness of the substrate plus the thickness of the mold it will select the nodes on the top surface of my model. So if I just do this Do n plot. Only those nodes are selected. And now I want to retrieve the number of nodes that I have in there. So I use star get. It's the command. I give a variable name, num node. And what I want to do with the star get is a node operation. No particular node, so I leave that empty. And I call count. So if I copy that, and if I come to here, if I find num not num node should be here. I have 3,753 nodes selected on the top surface. The next thing I want to do is to create an array. So star dim and the value the name is node list. The type is array, and I have this many rows, which is about 300, 3,700 nodes and five columns and each column is going to have some values associated with it. So if I do this and if I come to parameters, arrays, define and edit, I see that this is this is added. If I click edit, you can see that all of them are zero because I haven't assigned anything yet. So. The first thing I do is I use the star get command and use a or define a variable name called current node or C U R R underscore node. Now I want to know I want to use a nodal operation. Again, no particular node in the selected nodes, but I want to get the number and that's minimum. So I'll just show that in the help documentation for the star get command. If I go to pre-processing and find the nodes, see that for the numbers, I think it's in here, yes. I use stargate command, give a parameter name, node, and I'm not, look, I'm not working on a particular node, so I can give zero or blank there. Item is number, and max and min give me the maximum and minimum number, note number in that selection set. So if I do that, the current note will have a note number. So I just do that here. And come to scatter. Seer note, current note is 6104. That's the note number, the minimum note number in this set. And for that note number, now I want to do, I want to populate the, the array that I defined in here. So I use star get command. Note list is the number of array or num uh, the name of the array. And I want to 
start from row, row one, and I want to populate the, fir the five co uh, columns in this first row. So the first column for nodal operation, now care node refers to the node number that I selected there. And what I want is the location X of that node. So I'll come back here, see that I can come up there. If I do star get parameter name, node, now here I need to uh, specify which node number I want to work with, which I use the care, care node command or parameter and then location and I can give X, Y, and Z. And I repeat this to get the Y and Z of that. So to populate X, Y, and Z or the first three columns of the first row. The next thing is that I want to, to retrieve the U in, uh, in the Y direction or this present Y direction and give it to the fourth column of the row. So it's not only pre-processing that we could do with the start get command, we could also do post-processing. So if I come to post-processing and find the nodes, I can see U, X, Y, Z in sum, and I can also do the temperature, but temperature doesn't have a component. So that's what I'm doing the second two start get commands. So if I do these lines and add them to, or paste them into ANSYS and go back to the array parameters and take a look at this, I can see that the, uh, the first row is populated but the rest of the rows are empty or zero. Now I cannot do this one by one for 3700 nodes. That's why I use the do command or star do. So it's very similar to for loops in MATLAB or other languages. It's star do and then you define the parameter name. I'm calling it i and I'm saying from the two which is row two to the number of nodes that I have. So I had about 3,700 nodes, so do that for all the nodes. And at every node, use the star get, change the name for the current node, and I'm looking at the node. Use current node and find the next highest number. So basically it's like x equals x plus one in, in MATLAB or Python that you would use to, to update the value of an um, of a parameter and here all I'm doing is I'm saying for this current node use the current node and add it to the next uh, highest number node number so let's go back to pre-processing of star get if I come here and find nodes and do next H so star get parameter name Note, num note and note number, next highest number, gives me the next highest number in the list. And then repeat those uh, five uh, results, I mean location X, Y, and Z, displacement in Y direction and temperature of those nodes in each row. So now this one is changing per row and filling the columns per node or per row. So if I copy this, and be a little bit patient while ANSYS is doing its job, which wasn't that long, but come back to arrays and click edit. I can see that all of those nodes have values associated with them. I can keep going to next rows and this has about 3,700 rows and five columns. Now I can ext extract this in any software and uh, uh, do more post-processing. Let me do all cell here and E plot. I'm done with that. And I can also use a um, VWrite which only works in batch mode. It won't work in the window of ANSYS. So I cannot copy these lines in here. So I can extract them in, an, in a text file or um, uh, and save them, import them in a um, different software like MATLAB and do more post-processing. So in this video, we did a in-depth post-processing of the simplified PCB model that we solved earlier in this lecture.